want to welcome everybody again. I'm Jamal Corner. I'm going to be facilitating this morning's information session. If you require Spanish translations for the session, please follow the directions provided on the screen. I also want to remind our speakers this morning to speak a little slowly as today's presentation is also being translated simultaneously. So joining us this morning, we have Vice President Alma Renteria from our Board of Education, our Superintendent, Dr. Gudio Crossway, Assistant Superintendent of Education Services, Dr. Shauna Dinkins, Chief Business Official, Gregory Fromm, and Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Dr. Brian Lucas. At this time, I'm going to invite Ms. Renteria to say a few words. Ms. Renteria? Good morning. Good morning. And thank you so much for having me. Um, it's really important for us to just make sure that we share as much information as becomes available and that we take proactive steps to hear from all of you. So I just want to reiterate our gratitude uh, for all of the audience that's here today. We really do appreciate you getting involved and coming out to hear us. Uh, know that as a board, we feel strongly that what has occurred is unacceptable in our community and we will be aggressively pursuing efforts to hold accountable anyone responsible for the construction issues. We are extremely empathetic to our community and staff impacted by the situation, but we're making safety the top priority. We remain committed to providing safe and engaging learning and work environments for our students, staff, and faculty. Our goal is also to minimize disruption during this transition. After much consideration, we feel confident that this is the best path forward to not only restore our Linwood High School campus, but continue the success of students and programs at all the schools affected. We know shifting students from their schools can have a big impact, but we are committed to continuing to deliver the highest quality instructions, facilities, and campus engagement with the least possible disruption. We are confident that our facilities team will have a seamless plan in place to facilitate the move and our school administrators, teachers and staff will work collaborative, collaboratively to make the shift as painless as possible for parents and students. Because our student safety and learning priority uh, experience is our first priority. We are grateful for the support of our Linwood community. It's your collaboration that has allowed us to reach new heights as a district. And together we will meet this challenge as we all, as we have all others and continue to thrive. We pledge to be transparent and keep you updated as we move forward. Linwood Unified School District is committed to providing safe and engaging learning and work environments for our students, our staff, our faculty, and to ensure that our families are proud to be a part of the Linwood Unified community. We will provide regular updates as information becomes available as well as forums for community members to learn more about this campus construction realignment. So again, thank you for being here today. I will be staying through the entire presentation because I wanna make sure I take some notes, uh, know that as a board, we are all very much committed to hearing your concerns, to hearing your ideas and bring it all back to the table so that we can make informed decisions and ensure that we're all a part of this together. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Renteria. Just as a reminder, uh, you can follow the instructions on the screen to see and hear this presentation in Spanish. We're going to give you those instructions one more time in Spanish. Esta sesión se está transmitiendo en inglés y en español. Siga las instrucciones en la pantalla para ver y escuchar la presentación en español. Hacia arriba de su pantalla, haga clic en View Options para ver las opciones de idioma de la presentación. En el fondo de su pantalla, haga clic en Interpretación para ver las opciones de audio. Thank you for that. At this time, I'm going to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Crossway. He's going to provide an overview of today's session. Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Conner. And thank you, Vice President Renteria, for joining us today for your support and unwavering leadership for the Linwood community. Once again, good morning. 
and thank you for attending today's information session. First and foremost, I hope that you, your family, and your loved ones are all doing well. I know that there are a lot of questions and we will do our best to answer as many as we can today, but we will also have multiple opportunities for you to share your concerns and direct questions to us. Today, we will provide you with a summary of the issues we are facing and our current instructional plans for next year. And at the end of this meeting, we will have a question and answer session. While we know that this situation is not ideal, we are making these plans with student safety as our focus and plan to make the shift as seamless as possible. As a school district, we cannot compromise on student safety. Now, I'll provide some, now we'll provide some background on the timeline of events that has led to these realignment plans. Plans for the instructional shifts were sparked by the discovery of structural issues at Linwood High School following the unexpected failure of exterior roofing panels, also known as soffits, at Linwood High School. Linwood Unified launched an immediate review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the repairs needed. Linwood Unified families were also provided high level information that there had been a structural issue that we were looking into. Our school board immediately scheduled an emergency meeting to address the situation in June. Linwood Unified quickly launched a review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the repairs needed. Additionally, we have worked closely with the California Division of State Architects, also known as DSA, to address these concerns. Once again, once the soffits were identified as concerning, our board quickly acted again to hire a firm in an overabundance of caution to remove the ceiling soffits. As you can see on this timeline, numerous meetings took place and ultimately, Linwood Unified hired an independent structural engineer to help us assess the safety of the building while investigating the cause of the collapse. On July 23rd, the Board of Education made an agreement with Petra Structural Engineers to assess the condition of the plaster soffits at Linwood High School and an agreement with Delterra to provide emergency project oversight of the soffits. On September 10th, our school board approved an emergency resolution to remove all soffits at Linwood High School. Then on October 8th, our board approved agreements with contractors for the emergency removal of the soffits. Then on November 8th, our school board held another information sessions, another special meeting and study session followed by on November 12th, our board approved an agreement with the engineering firm to assess the condition of various overhead items on the Linwood High School campus. For a little more background information on the October 8th board meeting, our school board entered into a service agreement with AP Construction and Fast Track Construction. And on November 12th, our district made a structural engineering service agreement with Petra Structural Engineers to assess the condition of various overhead items at Linwood High School. Then on December 10th, we entered into an agreement with TYR Incorporated to provide assessment services in conjunction with the emergency plaster soffit removal project at Linwood High School. I know someone has their hand up. We will be addressing questions right after this presentation. And in the meantime, please feel free to enter any questions into the chat during the presentation and we will also get to those. So just thank you for that. And then just following this on Sunday, January 24th, just last month, our school board held another special meeting to review an update on Linwood High School facilities and propose instructional shifts for the 21-22 school year. At this meeting, our school board emphasized, as Ms. Renteria said earlier, that the process must be very public 
and very transparent with all decisions placing students and staff safety first. The following day on Monday, January 25th, we met with school principals to inform them of the shifts. And we also met with the staff at Linwood High School and Linwood Middle School. The following day on Tuesday, January 26th, we notified families that the structural concerns were serious and that plans were in development to physically move instruction off Linwood High School's campus while the investigation continues and repairs are made. Our district is planning to move all Linwood High School student instruction to another campus during the 21-22 school year, which will impact middle and elementary school age students as well. Please note the following dates of future information sessions and their respective topics. Each information session will be recorded and made available on the English district website in English and in Spanish, on our district website in English and in Spanish. And throughout this transition, we will provide regular updates to our community, sharing new information as it becomes available through a variety of platforms, including our website, these information sessions, phone blasts, and our social media. As a district, we will also be gathering feedback through a digital survey that will be sent to all Linwa Unified families this month. As always, I'd like to personally thank you for your support of Linwa Unified as we continue working together to create the strongest learning environments and strive to ensure the success for every one of our students. Again, please note that at the end of this session, we will respond to any questions you post on the chat forum. So we encourage you to submit those throughout this presentation. And I'll send it back to you, Mr. Corner. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. Now I'm gonna introduce Mr. Gregory Fromm. He's gonna be pro providing us more detail on the construction issues. Mr. Fromm. Thank you, Jamal. We will now take a look at the affected buildings. The G building, the central multi-story facility where the classrooms are located has been closed for use since June, 2020. Out of an abundance of caution, the district had the engineering firm assess all buildings on campus. To a lesser extent, there are structural concerns at other LHS buildings. Once the investigation is complete and repairs are identified, a timeline will be set and shared with the community. At this time, we believe that repairs to the lesser affected facilities could be completed before the 21-22 school year begins. At this time, we do not have information on the cost of the repairs or remedies to the LHS campus, but the district will share these details once they are known. The district will aggressively pursue remuneration from anyone deemed responsible for construction flaws, as well as matching funds from available state facility dollars. As you know, the Linwood Unified Committee has supported bond measures for facility improvements in recent years. In 2012, the community supported Measure K, a $93 million bond measure, which has so far funded $52.7 million in repair projects and upgrades across the district. The community also supported the $65 million Measure N in November of 2016. This measure has funded over $15.3 million in projects to date. In January of 2020, the district issued 25 million in Measure N bonds for repairs and upgrade projects across the Linwood Unified community. It's important to note that community approval of Measure K and Measure N included guidance for how those bond funds were to be used with a focus on specific facilities and repairs needed across the district. Funds from past bond measures have been spent or are currently committed to current projects. Here is a list of some completed and pending projects at sites throughout 
the district. I will now turn it back over to Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Fromm. I'd like to remind all of our speakers to continue to speak slowly, just for the benefit of our simultaneous translation. I also wanna remind all of our audience members to continue submitting your questions in the chat. I know there was someone with their hand up. Um, you are welcome to submit your question in the chat whenever you're ready. And we will, we will uh, take your question at the very end. We have a question and answer session. Um, we're almost through, so we'll, we will get to that if you wanna leave it in the chat for now. Appreciate that. At this time, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Shauna Dinkins. She's gonna be highlighting the district's current plans for realignment. Dr. Dinkins. Good morning, thank you all for being here. Now that we've provided background on the construction issues, we will outline the instructional shifts for next year. Linwood High School students will attend the Linwood Middle School campus, which formerly housed Linwood High. Current fifth graders, will remain at their elementary schools next year for sixth grade. Cesar Chavez and Hostler Middle Schools will have grades seven and eight with most Linwood Middle School students attending Hostler. These adjustments are planned for the 21-22 school year, but may be extended as needed based on the extent of the construction issues at Linwood High School. Here, we have a map that outlines school boundaries, detailing where elementary students will promote for middle school. Throughout this process, our goal is to minimize the disruption to our students, both those who will be shifting campuses and those who are already on those campuses. The shift of sixth graders to elementary schools and the addition of new classrooms will ensure both Hostler and Chavez provide strong learning environments for all students. Linwood Unified is committed to keeping our rigorous program of core academics and electives during this transition time, such as AVID, STEAM, music, and college and career pathways. The district is currently determining the best assignments to serve students at our middle schools. In many cases, we expect our current LMS staff to join the Chavez and Hostler seventh and eighth grade teaching and support teams. Principals will be dedicated to ensuring strong student connections and support. Linwood Unified has also adopted a social emotional curriculum district-wide to support the needs of our students. We are working to provide additional social emotional supports during this time of transition, including five licensed social workers. Now I'll turn it back over to Jamal. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Dinkins. Also wanna just thank our audience for listening to our presentation this morning. Please know that while many of these details and plans are pending, we're gonna remain focused on our goal and that's to keep our students safe. We will continue to provide you regular and transparent updates as information becomes available. Uh, we'll do that on our school websites as well as on our district website. And we'll also email our families. At this time, I think we're gonna share the questions you've submitted through the chat and answer those to the best of our ability. Before we begin, I wanna remind you that if you have a complex or personal question, you can email those questions to meetingquestions at mylusd.org for a direct and private response. For those of you, of course, who might be watching this session at a later date, uh, we also encourage you to send in your questions via the email on the screen. 
if you happen if we happen to miss your question this morning as well, uh, you may also use the email so that we can follow up with you. So I'll look. I'll go through the chat here. I want to give you guys an opportunity to um, utilize the chat to ask any questions you might have uh, this morning. Um, and you know, once again, the email is available for you if a question occurs to you at a later date. Maybe while we're waiting, we can go through a couple of the uh, frequently asked questions that we've had from our our previous meetings and community members. Or I see one now. Um, the question is, how are they going to decide who goes where? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? Yes, thank you. So um, traditionally, we would use um, addresses to determine the next school um, in a framework of equity. We um, have divided the six elementary students. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, we have divided the 12 elementary schools, um, six going to CCMS and six going to Hostler. Um, I don't have all the schools in front of me, so I'm gonna try to go by memory. So please forgive me if I make a mistake, um, but Marshall, Lugo, I wanna say, um, Roosevelt. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to do this wrong. Let me get the names. It's on the map, but it's very um, difficult to see. But I will get you that feeder pattern. Um, if you just give me a beat, take the next question, and then Jamal, I'll come back with those schools and how we divided them. Because this can't be wrong. I need it to be accurate. Thank you. Also, let me emphasize though, if you are um, tagged to go to a middle school that you do not desire we will assist you in our student support services office with a requested transfer. Thank you for that. And thank you for getting the, the clarity on that. And we'll share that information momentarily. Our next question, it's a two part, looks like a three part question. Uh, class size, will there be a big difference? And how does the population of students at Linwood High School fit into Linwood Middle School. Well, Mr. Fromm, I know you you can field the last part of that question. Yes, Jamal, thank you. <clears throat> so uh, with the work being done to bring over Linwood high, uh, high School students, we will have the, the uh, size to fit the whole Linwood High School, uh, which currently is about 2,200 2, kids onto that, uh, school grounds uh, with the work and improvements being done that that school will be able to hold up to 2,300 students. Thank you for that. And I'm gonna move on to- Mr. Our... Corner, can I address the class size issue quickly? Please, thank I you. Think that came up a couple of times and uh, we should actually anticipate no changes to class size. Uh, yes, the students will be moving and some campuses will have more students on the campus, but there will be more classrooms opened and more teaching staff at those sites. So class sizes should remain the same. Thank you for that. Our next question kind of piggybacks on the previous one. Uh, what measures is LA, LUSD taking to prepare for this relocation? Considering we are still in the middle of a pandemic, uh, will this relocation impact class size? So that was kind of uh, answered there, but um, maybe we can speak to the the measures and particularly those um, that have to do with the with the pandemic. Uh, Dr. Crossway, would you like to field this question? Sure. Yes. Hi, Thelma. It's good to see you on video. I know I usually get some of your emails, but thank you for that question. And as Thelma said. Is, is COVID is very real and, and it is here to stay. So what I wanna make sure that everyone understands is that what we're doing right now is not just in preparation for the movement of students from Linwood High School to LMS. What we're doing right now is also to make sure that we have all of the recommended safety protocols and measures in place. So for example, we are installing 
handless water uh, dispensers. So students can bring in their water bottle and, and, and all current water faucets are turned off, but this way they're able to get water. We also are installing the MERV 13 air filters. This is one of the recommendations from the CDC as well as California to help ensure that the air circulating in classroom and in offices is, is clean and it eliminates about 99 point some percent of viruses. The other thing is that we are still requiring all employees and students whenever they come onto our facilities to wear a mask and that is not optional. And so we as a district have not closed since March, but we have remained open with these additional safety protocols. The other thing I wanna emphasize is that it's unlikely that we're going to be able to bring back all of our students at the same time for this summer or for the fall. If students should be able to return to school in person, it will most likely be a hybrid approach meaning that certain students will be on campus at a time. And when that question comes up about the class size, currently the ratios for in-person instruction are 12 students per teacher. So only 12 students on average per classroom. There may be some exceptions for athletic conditioning, for example, and some classes may be even smaller depending on the needs of the students. So those are some of the things that we're currently working on, but also anticipate for this summer and for the fall. And, and while I'm talking about that, I also just wanna address the, the COVID vaccine because it's a question that has come up repeatedly on the information sessions. And so currently there's a vaccine for people who are 16 and up. There is no vaccine currently available for anyone under 16. And so even with the vaccine distribution, it's, it's unlikely that there will be something for students under 16. And right now they're saying, you know, somewhere between six to nine months, it could take a little longer. As you can see, the, the current rollout for the vaccine is also has been delayed and there's been some challenges with that. So there still remains to be a, a lot of questions, but we can anticipate that for this fall and as well as this summer, if students are able to return in person, it'll most likely be a hybrid situation with limited number of students coming back in person. I have my feeder groups to piggyback on Dr. Crossway. I'm sorry, I just didn't have them in front of me and I want it to be accurate. So the Hosler feeder pattern is Abbott, Helen Keller, Lindbergh, Mark Twain, Rosa Parks, and Wilson. The CCMS feeder pattern will be Lincoln for next school year. Their current fifth graders will stay. That is the same also for Marshall, Lugo, Roosevelt, Washington, and Will Rogers. Thank you. Thank you for that, Dr. Dinkins. And of course, we'll uh, put that information on our district website so that you can have it and, and review it. Um, I think the second part of Thelma's question uh, was about the difference between middle school campuses. Will there be a major difference? Um, and will there be anything that explains those differences uh, to parents? Um, Mr. Fromm, um, would you like to, to field any differences between the, the campuses? There will, the differences, <clears throat> they, they will both have the same grades, seventh and eighth and we'll, we'll have enough facilities and rooms to meet the needs of the students assigned to go to those schools. Thank you for that. I think our next questions are concerning uh, virtual learning. Um, I'll pair these two together. Will virtual learning be an option for the next school year? And if children decide to stay online as opposed to going to LMS, Will online classes be any longer? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field these questions? Sure. Um, so virtual learning is available right now through our virtual academy. Um, and we will give you that um, number for you to reach as being led by Dr. Laura Quintana at this time. And um, will virtual be longer? 
we will have to see what the um, CDE comes out with as the instructional minutes are um, dictated by the state, as well as um, we have to work with our associations. So at this time, um, there's no plans for it to be longer, but we st it's still a work in progress. Thank you for that. And we have a follow up here. Um, will the current eighth graders at Hostler be going to LHS or will there be a change in the map as well for the eighth graders going into high school? That question may have been asked before your, your feed or clarification, Dr. Dingus, but if you want to follow up. Uh, no problem. So for this school year, if you have a current eighth grader, we are still going to high school by address. Um, we will be working with all stakeholders and deciding um, future feeder patterns for high school. But if you are at Hostler, Linwood Middle, if you are a current Linwood LMS student, it's Fireball High. Those have not changed. Thank you for that. And it looks like Thelma has a follow up about programs. Uh, I think she was asking more about programs than facilities. So will programs be um, transferred over to middle schools? Will they be offered offering the same ones? Dr. Dinkins, I see you nodding. Yes, um, this is a great opportunity to expand our programs and broaden them for more students to participate in AVID, STEM, STEAM, um, college and career pathways, uh, robotics, um, and we're expanding those programs at both middle schools, Hostler and CCMS. Perfect, thank you for that. And you have a question here. If, if students decide to return, how will the schedule be? Will it be overcrowded? Uh, maybe some students or parents decide to stay online but if there are more students who would like to attend, how will it be that they attend the school? Will it be Monday through Friday or will they rotate students so that parents who wanna send their children to campus have the opportunity? So it looks like there's just questions about how, the, how a hybrid model uh, might potentially work um, for next school year. Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? Sure. So in, in collaboration with our associations, a hybrid model would mean that not all students are in class at the same time. So as Dr. Crossway was talking about in-person cohorts right now, the limit is 12 to 14. The state is also looking at um, changing that as our metrics go down for um, Linwood. As you know, Southeast LA has high numbers um, for COVID. Um, so in a hybrid, all students are not on campus at the same time. And in general, you would have a group A and a group B. Um, we still have some work to do and some collaborations with associations before that is final, but there will be a virtual option. Parents will have options um, in determining how they would like to return. Thank you for that. I know a popular question that we've received in our other meetings um, regarding construction there is uh, how many buildings are, were affected and how many schools was this an isolated incident um, mr Fromm, would you like to speak to that a bit the incident is just over at linwood high school um, that was the only facility that was built by the uh, in our district that was built by the uh, the construction firm um, that built that school, that was the only school that they did work at in Linwood Unified. Thank you for that. And I don't see any further questions here. Um, I'll give you a couple minutes. In well, case well, you... oh, go ahead, well, Dr. While we're waiting for more questions, so again, please submit your questions, continue to submit them. I want to emphasize that at the end of this, you may think of more questions and, and maybe some ideas. So again, take a moment to write down the meeting questions at mylusd.org, where you can send them to us at any time. You have a great idea at two o'clock in the morning, send it in. But you got your principles here. All of us are here to support you. 
we're making a change in physical location for some of our students, but we're the same. The teachers are the same. The programs and the services are the same. And as you heard from Dr. Dinkins, we're actually planning on expanding the number of options available to students at the middle schools as well. And I know that the virtual environment is not the same as having your children attend class with their teachers and with their peers. And as, as challenging as it may be, we're also using these experiences to learn and grow and provide you with a better option. So once we are able to safely return kids to school, we will continue offering the virtual programs. And one of the things that we piloted last semester is a college course for middle school students. And right now we have more of our high school students taking college courses with the local community colleges because they don't have to now drive back and forth. And that's one of the things that our school board has, has pushed us is to open up the college courses for our students and to encourage more of our students to take these courses while they're in high school because they're free to Linwood Unified students we have dedicated counselors to support you with the application process. And when you take these college courses, they count like an AP class, like an advanced placement course. You get an extra point on your GPA. It looks good on your college transcripts. And for some students, they may be able to take half a, half a year or even up to a year or more of college courses before they even graduate from high school. And then the other thing I'll share again is emphasize that if you have any questions about which school is we have always given our parents options. We have always emphasized that we want to make sure that we have a flexible program to accommodate your needs. And so if you have questions, you don't have to wait or call the district office, call your school secretary, call your principal they will be able to help you out with this process as well. And we will be sending out the registration packets next month. And on that registration packet, you can indicate any preference or changes that you would like to see. And again, we also understand that they, because of the feeder patterns and where you live, some schools may be a little uh, closer to you now. And so we want to also just keep, we're keeping that in mind. So there is some flexibility with, with the uh, enrollment at the different school sites. So just wanted to make sure that you guys are aware we're still here. The programs are still there. Our staff is still there. And for us, we're staying true to our mission of making sure that every single student receives a quality education and that they have options beyond high school. Thank you. Thank you for that, Dr. Crossway. I don't see any further live questions, but we definitely look forward to receiving your future questions at our email, meeting questions at mylusd. And also we look forward to updating you with, with further information um, as that becomes available. Looks like we do have one from Veronica. I'm gonna give a moment here to have this question formatted. Yeah, these meetings are also being recorded, um, so they'll be uh, posted to our website. Um, you'll be able to, to watch the former meetings as well as the, the future ones. Um, catch something you missed. We're going to have a replay of this meeting tonight uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, and we will have another set of meetings next week on Tuesday, uh, February 16th. That will be at 9 a.m. and again at 6 p.m. And I have a question here. Um, we as parents do not want the teachers to have help uh, if they can put in more students so that they can teach well and at times and at lunchtime how to do it if some students don't make time to eat. 
Um, so it looks like a question about um, making sure students have uh, ample uh, lunch time. Um, Dr. Crossway, would you like to field this concern? Yes, thank you, Mr. Corner. I, I think there's a little typo on the Spanish version, but um, let me just read it once more. Nosotros como padres no queremos que los maestros tengan ayuda. Señora Verónica, si me puede clarificar la pregunta un poquito, se lo agradezco. So I'm just asking Veronica if she can help clarify that question because I think it has some typos, but I, I You know, I'll just say is that our, our teachers are going to support our students. And one of the things that we didn't get a chance to address here today is, is you know, going back to the virtual learning, it's not the same thing as being in class with peers and with teachers. And so we understand that. And what we are planning is on making more options available for more students this summer so that they can catch up, have something productive and constructive to do during their summertime. We don't want students to just be sitting around, but we also understand that students have been in front of a laptop or a screen, aside from their phones, right? Is they're now sitting in front of a laptop or screen for instruction and for personal and, and, and other things. But at the same time, we want to be able to provide them with structured educational opportunities so they can sort of catch up and also address the, the lack of instruction or learning that may have taken place because of the virtual environment. And I know the question was also related to lunch. How will we be able to support students if sometimes they're rushing to have lunch? And I'm assuming this question is related to the hybrid approach. So again, we're going to have a smaller number of students on our campuses during the hybrid instruction. And the information is changing. So there's different things. We can have students come in Monday through Friday, and then the following week they go uh, virtual, and then another group of students comes in. We can do it where they're coming in Mondays and Wednesdays. So there's different options. And then there's also the option of they, they, they take a sack lunch and then they, they leave campus. So it's a reduced instructional day if they're coming in person. But we also know that for some families, they need childcare. So for those families who may need childcare and academic support, we want to have those options available for you as well so that you can go off and do your job or whatever else you need to do and know that your child is in, is in good hands. The other thing is I wanna make sure that you're aware that we have after school tutoring available to all of our students. So we have tutoring programs right now where high school students are tutoring K-8 students. And we recently partnered with Paper Incorporated and I know we're still sending that information out, but if you have a high school student who needs help with chemistry, geometry, an AP class, an essay, that tutoring is now available seven days a week, 24 hours. So if they need help at 11 o'clock at night, we got help at 11 o'clock at night. If they need help seven o'clock in the morning before they start their online program, we have those services available. So we want to make sure that the support is there. And then the other thing is we have uh, counseling services and mental health support for any students who may be struggling, just lack of motivation, struggling to get out of bed. Give us a call, 310-886-1600. Again, 310-886-1600. 886-1600, I'll put that I'll put that number on the chat, but we have licensed social workers, and then we also partner with 38 different health agencies to make sure that your child gets the support that they need so that they can be successful, because these are hard times for adults, and you can imagine how much more difficult and challenging they are 
for our youth. And so for us as a school district, anything that we can do to support you at home, anything that we can do to support your child, that's what we wanna keep uh, doing. And, and again, if you have other needs, give us a call, send us an email, call your school principals, let us know what else we can do to support you. Thank you for that. And I do wanna read one question that was answered in the chat, but others might have it. Um, the question was about the timeline uh, for changing your student to another school. And Dr. Dinkins answer that you have time. Uh, program offerings will be sent with registration letters. There is not a time limit at this time for submitting a request to attend a different school. So just an FYI on that. Um, and I think that that is all for our live questions, but we look forward to your future questions. I want to thank you all for sending them in and thank you for bearing with me on some of the translation as well. You don't mind, Jamal. I just want to, sorry for interrupting. Just one last thing on behalf of the board. I just want to say thank you again to all, all of our staff for just being here today and making yourselves available, but to our families, please reach out share those ideas. I know that all of my colleagues are always open as well to receiving emails. We're on social media. We're looking for your input and your ideas as well. A lot of the questions that came up today didn't come up at the session we had last week. And that is why we continue to have these. We want to continue to hear from you and see, uh, see things from a different light. I know that this is impacting many families and we are not taking that lightly but we also are counting on your support. So please make sure you share those. We have a board meeting coming up this Thursday. I ask for all of you to engage with those board meetings, to submit questions when you have questions, uh, attend as many info sessions as you can. We will have more in the future as more information is shared out. And it is so critical for us to be able to hear from you so that we can feel that we are making informed decisions with your input as well. We never want it to feel like it's coming from the top bottom because at the end of the day, we are here to serve you. Uh, so thank you for making the time this morning. Thank you to all of you. Uh, staff as well for just being so uh, diligent in answering their questions and let's continue to work together and do what we can to ensure that this no longer um, this no longer feels like it's two separate decisions okay thank you thank you for that Ms. Renteria I think I'm going to pass it to Dr. Crosswaite if he's going to close this out this morning Dr. Crosswaite thank you Mr. Corner so first of all thank you again to Mr. Corner for facilitating the conversation today. Uh, Vice President, Ms. Santeria, thank you so much for your support, for being here and taking an opportunity to listen to the questions and the recommendations from our community. And thank you to all of our principals who are able to attend, our directors who are here with us this morning. And thank you to every single one of you for being here on a Wednesday morning, uh, getting this information directly from us. I know there's a lot of questions out there. There's a lot of misinformation out there and it's important for you to hear directly from us about what's going on. I also just wanna take a moment to acknowledge our translator, Elizabeth Orozco. She has been talking the entire time and doing a fantastic job, so thank you. And, and again, write down this email. This is an ongoing conversation. I, I got a text here, a direct message is, how can we engage the community? Here, here's the thing is that, as I said from the very beginning, we cannot compromise on safety. There's a lot of questions that remain unanswered. And, and we're going to need to continue this conversation with you to receive your input in how we move forward. So that's going to be really important. We had to make some quick decisions some quick recommendations in order to make sure that we had sufficient time to get our schools ready for the fall of the 21-22 school year. And so with that, again, thank you. Please continue taking care of yourself, your family, your loved ones, your neighbors, keep your social distancing, wear a face mask, and, and thank you for everything that you do and appreciate your support. Have a great day, everyone. That concludes our meeting. Thank you for joining us.